Hello and welcome to Live Now, the tech show for information and trends. We are here in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, where it's gorgeous and sunny, even though it's February. We're at the Wireless LAN Professionals Conference 2020, which is a wonderful show for the uh, Wi-Fi world and all sorts of wireless networking people. And we're lucky enough to be joined today by the wonderful David Coleman, now of Extreme Networks. David, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for, for having uh, me back, my friend. Being here. Oh, it, well, yeah. it's, it's wonderful. We, we chatted with you last year. Last year, yeah. Uh, uh, last year. Different hotel, same city. Different hotel, different company. Uh, yeah, I was uh, with Aerohive Networks a year ago. Aerohive Networks, right. uh, and you'd been with Aerohive for a considerable portion of time. Yeah, so my background, I've been in the Wi-Fi industry, networking for 30, 40 years, uh, Wi-Fi industry for 20, and uh, um, I joined Aerohive. Has it been 20 years of Wi-Fi? Yeah. Almost, it uh, barely seems possible. And actually, the 20th anniversary of the uh, the term Wi-Fi was coined 20 years ago. A little considering you're 35 years old. Oh, yeah, right. I, you started really early. Uh, uh, yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> the big six O's coming next week, if you want to know the truth. Wow. So, yeah, wow. So, uh, uh, obviously, being around all those antennas hasn't, yeah, that, hasn't uh, diminished your youthful yeah, looks. Yeah, so uh, Wi-Fi is actually good for your health. That's, so, that's, um, it looks but, that way. Um, Long story short, um, I had a, my own company for 10 years um, in Wi-Fi consulting and training. Uh, went to work for Aerohive because they had this really uh, disruptive uh, uh, technology. It was, it was a cooperative control distributed architecture uh, that nobody else was doing at the time. Um, and then uh, stuck around with them for about 10 years. And um, uh, it was uh, kind of a, it was a really great uh, company uh, to work for. Um, now, were you like employee number 17? I don't remember my then? employee number, but uh, prior to the acquisition from Extreme, uh, I was one of about four or five people that was still left. So right. I think I started when there was about 35 people. Well, so I started it was doing really that. a startup back, back oh, when you started. Oh, it was absolutely a startup. Um, and Aerohive went public. And, yeah, um, you saw it grow, you yeah. saw it go public, uh, and uh, then it kept going. Again, some fantastic products, some great software mm -hmm. uh, in their Hive Manager, I know, was uh, you know very popular. So that's actually interesting that you brought that up because um, I went to work for Aerohive because they had this disrupt, uh, disruptive technology that was Wi-Fi architecture, but then a funny little thing happened along the way, and that was cloud technology. And we went through several generations of cloud, and the, the final generation of Hive Manager um, is really um, the main reason that uh, Extreme Networks uh, acquired um, uh, Aerohive uh, last last year, last summer, uh, because they wanted that cloud technology to kind of be the heart and soul and engine of, of the company. So, well, and I, I know uh, when Hive Manager came out, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was groundbreaking at the time, and, but now, years later, many companies have I think there's you know gone along with that model of wanting to do cloud-based management. Right, we were one of the first two companies that did a first-generation cloud, which at the end of the day was just standing up servers in uh, data centers. Right. Um, we're currently on a third-generation cloud that is built on top of uh, microservices and an AWS or Google Cloud type uh, architecture. Um, so we actually have a head start of on uh, most of our competitors. Uh, with that, it's no longer called Hive Manager. Now that it is uh, Extreme, it's called Extreme Cloud IQ. Obviously, so very catchy, um, yeah, very catchy uh, name. Um, cloud IQ, I like Extreme it. Actually, Extreme Cloud IQ. Extreme Cloud IQ. Uh, yeah. So and. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting stuff. Um, but no more bees. No more bees, uh, the bees are gone. Do you know how many squishy bees yeah, I've no, collected from Aerohive no over the years? Squishy, no a lot squishy of squishy bees. bees. My kids I, love you for the squishy well, bees. Well, thank you, but we've traded that in for purple, so uh, I should be wearing purple because everything stream is purple. Indeed. So, so. But uh, it's actually pretty exciting, and what, what I'm excited about being at Extreme and being one of the lucky employees that came over is that uh, Extreme had a really awesome portfolio of networking products. Great switching technology, uh, data center technology, um, a solution called Air Defense, which has been the premier wireless intrusion prevention solution for years. Uh, locationing, uh, something called IoT Defender. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Uh, they really have a portfolio all the way from the access layer all the way to the data center. And it's no real secret here. I mean, 
you know, legal disclaimer, because the lawyers make me say this, but um, it, the, the goal is, is to get pretty much the entire networking portfolio talking to the cloud so it can be managed from a cloud perspective. Right. Uh, I know that uh, back when, you know, in AeroHive, you guys had a very good vertical with higher education mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and that segment. Uh, not as much with things like large venues and stadiums. I know Extreme, for instance, does a lot of work with large venues and stadiums. Absolutely. So it feels to me like, you know, they knew what they were doing when they acquired AeroHive and, it, and, and it's going to be a good fit. We had the missing component um, that they were looking for, which was cloud. Um, and now called Extreme Cloud IQ. They had their own Wi-Fi, uh, the, the wing architecture and the Identify stuff, which is all really good stuff um, and, as well. And, and um, uh, you're right, they're in verticals that Aerohive just couldn't get into. Um, uh, Extreme is, uh, uh, you know, they're the... I mean, they got the, the sales the, team, the, 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 the organization. Yeah, I mean, they're the, uh, we're the NFL partner uh, for Wi-Fi and analytics for the NFL, and um, we're in lots of stadiums. Um, so Extreme's been doing that for a long time and they're very good at it. Extreme does very, very well in healthcare, which Aerohive dabbed in a little bit, but Extreme has a, uh, a really good healthcare um, division and uh, lots of very large retail customers. Um, uh, Aerohive had retail customers. Um, uh, Extreme has a lot of big box retail customers, but at the end of the day, Extreme's in all verticals. Uh, and what's, what's exciting for me is, um, I re, you know, I, I'm a big, was always a believer in Aerohive, not just their wireless architecture, but their uh, cloud ar um, technology. What's exciting for me is that Extreme's going to be able to take it to the next level, where, Aero, quite frankly, Aerohive could just never get it to that next level, and Extreme's going to be able to do that. So, Well, so speaking of exciting to you, I mean, you are a Wi-Fi guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you literally, quite literally, wrote the book, a very, very thick book uh, on uh, Wi-Fi. And, uh, but now everything is moving to the cloud. So what does a Wi-Fi guy do <laughs> in the cloud? Well, Wi-Fi is just you know, a big part of networking, okay, because it's access technology. And at the end of the day, most individuals and most people, both in the enterprise that are at home, they're probably connecting to the network wirelessly um, as opposed to a wire. That being said, there's still wired networking. Um, there's always a piece of copper somewhere, okay? Uh, and, and of course, the, the big uh, paradigm shift in, in networking in general is cloud. So I'm part of the uh, marketing team. I'm the director of product management, and I'm on this new technical evangelism team along with Perry Correll. And a big part of what I'm supposed to be doing is evangelizing about cloud. Perry's also formerly of Arahive. Yeah, formerly of Arahive as guy. well. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we're evangelizing about cloud and not just about Wi-Fi technology. But um, yeah, I mean, I have a long Wi-Fi background. Um, it's interesting that you bring that up because um, uh, I do a lot of webinars with the company and we recently did a webinar on wireless or Wi-Fi design concepts back in December and uh, it broke records in the amount of registrations. Did registrations. you break the internet? We, not quite like Kim Kardashian, <laughs> but no, we got uh, you know well north of 9,000 registrations, so we were very happy of that, about that. And right, That's um, not PewDiePie sort of numbers, but at the no, same time, you know, we're talking about engineers here and... and, and all over yeah, the world, yeah. yeah. And so there's clearly um, still, even though cloud is, you know, it's, it's the management platform is what cloud is, right. you still have to have the uh, access technology, which is what Wi-Fi is. And so people, and Wi-Fi, even though it gets better and better and better, it still gets more complex and harder. I mean, it gets better, but it gets harder. So wireless uh, design is still important. So um, to segue, um, uh, we're actually going to probably be doing some little uh, road shows about Wi-Fi design in uh, probably a March and April time frame in North America in 2020 uh, to talk more about Wi-Fi design. But it's, it's a clearly a topic that a lot of people are, are always going to be interested in. Is that, that's uh, coming soon to a city near you? Coming soon. Can you Stay look, tuned. Go on to the Extreme website and we'll, find... We'll, we'll hopefully have information soon. Right, right. So uh, you were speaking here uh, at the wireless... I mean, we could talk about AeroHive and Extreme all day, but we are at the Wireless Land Professionals mm -hmm. Conference. You gave a talk here uh, yesterday, very well received. What were you talking about? Yeah, I was talking about dynamic frequency selection, which is a technology that APs use for um, uh, trying to figure out, to try to avoid radar. 
um, and oh. so they don't interfere with radar. And I actually did the presentation back in Prague, uh, back in October, and did uh, an in updated version of the presentation. And I'm proud to say it's very well received. This is a vendor neutral conference. It's not an extreme conference or, or a competitor's conference, but everybody's here. And it's just a bunch of us Wi-Fi geeks uh, learning about wireless technologies in general. And uh, So in the spectrum, and forgive me, I'm a little mm -hmm. ignorant, in the spectrum of Wi-Fi, uh, does radar would take priority? Absolutely. So um, in, uh, in a segment of channels in the 5 gigahertz span, it's on the same frequency. You uh, cannot Wi-Fi cannot interfere with radar, weather radar and military radar. So the, what APs have to do is, if they detect one of six different types of radar pulses, is they have to send out what's called a channel switch announcement. Not to get too geeky, not at but all. To tell the client, we can do geeky. <laughs> hey, we're on channel. 100, we yeah. just heard radar, we got to go. So let's all go to channel 36. Right. So it's, it's a uh, it's a pre preventative and protective measure so we don't interfere with um, radar that's important for, you know, the weather and, and military communication. So. Now that's, and that's in the 5 gigahertz uh, 5 gigahertz. Band. I know uh, something that's being talked about here at the show, which is not something that is a, a standard yet though, mm -hmm. is Wi-Fi 6E. Right. Which is taking Wi-Fi up into the 6 gigahertz. Yes. If that becomes legal and, and the FCC approves that, is that no longer going to be an issue then? No, so it'll be different issues. So there, um, I'm extremely excited about 6 gigahertz because it's going to open up a whole chunk of I just of like that it's called 6E because you yeah, can say, that's six, really 6E. Six, that's six, really 6E. Six 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 really 6E. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that, but it's, I, from I'll a be market, stealing that. The marketing, <laughs> the, the, the marketing t-shirts write themselves. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, it, yeah, it's actually pretty exciting. It'll happen in the United States first and in other countries will follow, but it's a whole chunk of new frequency space right. for unlicensed use. The FCC has realized that uh, unlicensed spectrum uh, opens up all kinds of opportunity and generates billions into the United States economy. Uh, so that's why they're going to open up more space, including for um, Wi-Fi. There are some incumbents there, though. So the, the rules still are being a little bit determined. There might be some rules about power re uh, rules. There's no real DFS, but there might be something called, um, I think it's called AFS, Automated Frequency sele uh, Selection, which is kind of similar, but it's, um, it's going to be linked into a database uh, type system to make sure you're not interfering with some of the incumbents. So not quite the same thing, but uh, kind of the same concept so that, that you don't interfere with other radio transmitters that are already existing in the six gigahertz band. Gotcha. And so I assume Extreme will be on top of 6E when it's... Yeah, uh, I mean, it, I, you know, we'll be aggressive. Yeah. I can, I mean, and, you know, it's a no-brainer. And once again, I, you know, I've also been evangelizing quite a bit about Wi-Fi 6 and 802.11ax. The cool thing about 6 gigahertz, it'll be all 802.11ax technology. Right. There's no need for backward compatibility. So it's a little weird that it'll be Wi-Fi 6 on 6 gigahertz. Like, yeah. The timing is suspicious. Which is why the name, uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance came up with the uh, e. next uh, certification. 6e yeah so um, so try to avoid a little bit of confusion. Is there an? Is there? A, is it still AX or is it? It'll be all AX it, technology okay. on on six gigahertz. With five gigahertz, there has to be backwards compatible technology. We just have a minute or two more. Sure. Uh, I know. Speaking of Wi-Fi six, uh, last year Wi-Fi six was just around the corner. Mm -hmm. I get the sense that it is still just around the corner, yeah. Does it, uh, even though it's a year since no, we last spoke. No, I mean, spoke. it's here. I mean, every vendor, including us, we have a whole host of uh, APs. Um, and devices, uh, the and new, like, iPhone 11. Well, that's 11. the good news. Probably when I was talking to you a year ago, the right. devices really weren't here yet. Right. So that, so really, that is that Until is you get changing. the devices. That, yeah, so, and you will really start seeing the true benefits as the client populations increase. Right. The good news is most of the devices that are starting to come out are, have uh, Wi-Fi 6 radio chipsets, the iPhone 11 that came out. Uh, so more, um, if you look at the projections, everything moving forward is going to have 802.11ax technology. And then we can start t taking advantage of the multi-user component. And that's, um, uh, so as client populations uh, increase, then we'll really start taking advantage of Wi-Fi 6 technology. Oh, fantastic. So, and the last thing I want to ask is just about you personally. Uh, going from AeroHive to Extreme, 
How are they treating it? How's the culture being over there? Is it is it fun and exciting? Yeah, it's absolutely fun and exciting. You know, you know, change is good. That's why you know, this old guy has learned that actually change is a good thing. So um, there's new challenges. Um, I'm having a, a good time learning about new technologies that Extreme has, meeting new people, um, and yeah. new customers, new partners. So put, you're pushing uh, the six over. You know, you're still learning new stuff. It's yeah, great. yeah. You never stop learning, um, and uh, you can never stop learning. So like when you graduate from college, do you uh, when a doctor Graduate, graduates from college, does he just stop learning? Yeah, I assume about that's it, right? That's <laughs> you know, it. The doctor needs to, work. to learn about yeah. the new coronavirus, right? right so, right. Uh, same thing. Why? It's there's always room to continue. Continuing education is important. Well, that is a great message. And with that, David Coleman, I would like to say thank you so much for coming on thank today. You. It's great to see you again. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And we're going to take a short break, but we'll be back with a lot more from Wireless Land Professionals right after this here on Live Now.